I almost skipped this topic today. I, I don't want this to be about uh, uh, about identity politics, but it does fall no. into it. It's about Sandra Bullock. I don't know. I just I'm kind of tired of Sandra Bullock as a person, and no, <laughs> that's you go Miracle shirt. I'm tired of Sandra Bullock as a person. <laughs> yeah, she's so just exhausting me. There, yeah, there's exactly. some there's some interesting stuff in this because th- there's parts about this that I think are absolutely accurate. Uh, in relation to Hollywood, uh, I, I think that the implication from a lot of people is to is to scoff at stuff like this, mm-hmm. especially from such successful people. But it says Sandra Bullock says uh, if it wasn't for Netflix, she'd be out uh, out in the cow pasture. It's exactly. True. Uh, Sandra Bullock credits her Netflix success to keeping her career thriving. The actress recently launched The Unforgettable, the streaming platform uh, on the streaming platform to huge success, catapulting the drama to among the top ten most watched on the platform. What else is higher up on that ranking list? Her mega popular 2018 thriller Bird Box. Bird Box was just like, did either of you see? Um, I watched the whole thing. And but the you, quiet pa- um, you place. saw a quiet place. It's just mm-hmm. a quiet place, but for eyes. Yeah, yeah. that's what I. Because mm-hmm. I liked Quiet Place because I like John Krasinski. Well, and, like, who doesn't all, like her? Hus- mm-hmm. And husband wife teams like that was cool. But like mm-hmm. Bird Box, all I remember is like the thing, and she'd be like walking yeah. like this. I like never she, saw it. you remember the Bird Box challenge on YouTube and TikTok? I know? do. Yep. It's so dumb. So they're like, okay, Bird Box challenge. Let's see if we can turn on the stove. And like, oh, with their like eyes cl- or like with yeah, like they got blindfolded and they were like guess what food this is and like marketing mm -hmm. and this one person who did it um i I think dietrich did it he's an old um like old original youtube but he tried to do it and he got banned because they were saying dude this is dangerous and you're advertising this to kids don't do this anymore and he was like i'm doing a challenge that's popular on youtube i'm doing something other people are Mm -hmm. doing right yeah i i find uh i don't know where I'm going with this, but mm-hmm. she, uh, I don't like like if if you're already doing something if if uh, the whatever. Well, mm-hmm. let Sandra Bullock have her day. Well, also there was another Netflix movie um, that basically they said it was similar to The Quiet Place. It wasn't Bird Box. It's with the actress who played as Sabrina in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which is called Quiet. Like everybody wasn't talking. The only weapons they were allowed to use anything that's stealth like, and like there was a there was a cult. There was a cult a part of it and they're called like um i forgot what the cults are but basically all the members they cut off their tongues because they didn't want to make so they can be quiet yeah so they can be quiet apparently as soon as uh, something like a quiet place finds success you'll get the 30 knockoffs mm-hmm. uh, okay the thing about a quiet place was i was interested i went to see it because i was interested in like john krasinski and the backstory and mm-hmm. like him and emily blunt and, like whatever i liked it that was good enough uh i never saw bird box but I did see a thousand memes of Bird Box. Yes. Yep. And that was really all I knew about the movie. And I felt like that was all I needed to know. Well, okay. So Bird Box, a summary of it. You don't know what the monster is. They have theories who it is. You can watch it on Film Theory. Where he says it might be Cthulhu's, like, one one of his minions. But basically, it's like the whole society is, like, being haunted by, like, these monsters that they can't see. But if they do see them like basically it turns you insane and like you turn suicidal Mm. and they're trying to avoid it and she was in a group that was stuck in the house together but then slowly they all got killed off and like her and there's like some people who actually um actually can see these monsters and they don't commit suicide but they try to get other people to see them because they're like you need to be awakened so um she had a partner his name is tom and And basically, like, they were trying to survive, and these, like, cultists, like, try to get them, and they killed him off, and there was, like, two kids that were there with them, and she was too lazy to name the kids, so she named them boy and girl, and then at the end, she finally gave them a name, Mm -hmm. because they went to a sanctuary where it was a bunch of blind people, Hmm. and, like, the demons couldn't get in there. Is it Fahrenheit 451 Mm -hmm. that at the end of the book, he, like, they go into the woods, and he's like, we have to have names now, so... Mm -hmm. In it's the, kind of like that concept in the uh, in the Dystopian movie dystopian stuff mm-hmm. in Tenet the car- the J- Joel David Washington's John David Washington Joel I was thinking of Joel David Moore uh, John David Washington's name in the movie is literally protagonist <laughs> very good I think that's great that's great well so it's, it's, 
so here mm-hmm. let's, let's just go on so it says uh, they're good to artists she's talking about Netflix here mm-hmm. it says uh, she, she, she's told about the outlet uh, it is responsible for many of Hollywood's careers at this point remember everyone was poo-pooing Netflix 10 years ago as a place to make movies mm-hmm. it was just a place Netflix to dump Netflix like we're doing it anyway yeah and Netflix is like we've got gazillions of dollars and they're still and they still operate at like a loss because of how much they create like mm-hmm. so it says they're good to artists they're good to filmmakers if it wasn't for Netflix a lot of people wouldn't be working uh, the fifty-seven year the fifty-seven year old Oscar winner said, "Their stories wouldn't be told. Who would uh, who would think that me, as a woman who is still would, would still be here working at this point? I know, I know, I would have been out 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 in the cow pasture. It's true. The success of shows like Squid Games is one of the bigger ones. She pointed out. I've seen more work from other countries told by other nationalities, and we never would have had that ten years ago. Yes, you would. It just wouldn't be seen here. Also, like." Are you saying yay for globalism? That's Maybe. sound. I mean, not, that's not it is me, essentially thanks. what they're saying. Yeah, I, they those stories would still be told. They just wouldn't be seen here as readily here in America. Uh, they, you know, it, like the Japanese movies would be being seen at the Japanese box office. So she's and they right. might make it if they get here. I don't she, think it's she's a bad right point. about that. No. Uh, so uh, it brings people together in a way that it really it, it brings people together in a way that really you know we're getting more and more divided, and yet we have the streamers that are able to blend our stories together and go look same story just different mm-hmm. isn't that what all the american remakes are of all this yeah so it says in 2018 bullock told usa today that she almost quit acting because of sexism in hollywood Ugh. um Ugh. Yes. so annoying I, and I, so, did she cite something specific or yeah, was she well, just like and i brought this up on like two girls hosting with me today i can talk about this did and not be the, my gender and uh, yes i did and i'm not the bad guy uh we deleted a segment yesterday because i kept Miss Gen- I met I kept missed uh, gendering Demi. I Demi told Lover. him to use Demi instead of trying. It's to hard. I I tried. I I so told him like you I don't can't just switch my speech pattern on command. Oh my god! Wait. But I told you if you didn't want to get in trouble about like calling them them that de- uh, they you could have just said Demi. Nobody would have got mad at you. Wait. So what did Sandra Bullock cancel? So, so it says or? my career has been a de- uh, domino effect of people who said I would like quote I would like this person to fill the role. The Ocean's Eight star said at the time and not just in the industry but people in my life my mother raised me like quote you don't need to get married you forge your own path you make your own money and be your own person she's literally done that her whole life she, she's in her I, I don't know what she's expecting a lot of people are getting close to retirement at the age of 57 mm-hmm. well also you remember that article that i sent you we didn't want to talk about it but she was talking about like how she was so proud of adopting black kids from africa and she was like trying to make a whole big deal about it yeah so she's a she's in this i, I wanted to bring because I, I do think there's an interesting discussion to be had here mm-hmm. about whether it's sexism or whether it's just she's losing popularity nobody cares about old n- sandra bullock anymore the well if the movie did well if mm-hmm. unforgivable did well uh it says later in the career bullock it- said she had a wake-up moment where i was like what is this feeling why do i feel so uh, expletive she she added quote oh my god i'm being treated this way because i have a vagina oh oh that's uh, what what's her face taylor swift said the same thing when they made the netflix documentary she was like oh my god hollywood is so sexist and i'm like bruh there is the only reason why you're famous is because of these men that you claim are so sexist yeah towards also you. like She's famous because she is a woman. Like mm-hmm. there, they literally use it as part of their marketing exactly. tool. Exactly. The thing about Sandra Bullock, it, and maybe I'm just missing something from her speech, but like. It, it seems like she's worked really consistently for years. Yep. I mean, mm-hmm. I can think back. She did what Miss Congeniality. She mm-hmm. was a ton of. She was working. What, Speed the 90s? was in the nineties. Working really consistently. She did um, uh, the Blind Side. Yeah, but, good at movie. the time it wasn't like oh, finally Sandra Bullock's back. Like she was in a bunch of stuff. She's worked really consistently. Yep. I mean, if she it made a lot of money doing it, if she's had problems with the industry, if you want to pivot to working for Netflix, I don't care. But uh, it sounds like she is saying like she had a problem. I don't know. It seems like she hasn't had a problem. Nope. No? No. So, so my question is... Uh, I'm just saying... She's yeah. right about the stories. Mm-hmm. She's right, like, different cultures are being able to tell different stories now. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's maybe that it's more roles are being written that can be, that can use somebody her age, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of women uh, in Hollywood think of it as, like, uh, when do I start playing the mom and not the... But she already did that. Like, exactly. It's interesting because she has transitioned. I mean, I would... I am not a... You know, her number... I'm not writing her biography or anything, but, like... 
she's worked consistently. She's transitioned with her age. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I don't feel like as far as so we know. So where is the sexism? Right. Or mm-hmm. it seemed like, you know, you mentioned she had adopted some kids. If she wasn't working for a while, to me, it has seemed like it has been her choice. Yeah. Maybe I am wrong. But well, again, I'm just going to say maybe she's just bringing this all up again because nobody cares about Sandra Bullock. Like, nobody is, like, bringing up her name. Like, a lot of celebrities who are older, like, for example, McDonald. Um, madonna i called her mcdonna my bad because she's so bad Collabor- for you. collaboration with mcdonald's yeah she's amazing. so bad for you she's a mcdonald's she's got two things mm-hmm. in post-production right now bullet train the lost city unforgivable came out and then these are uh, i'll give you the the time periods here so she's got remember she's she's not a tv star she's a movie st- she she's a movie actress so that's uh, a lot of times if you're doing that you're doing one or two projects a year right that mm-hmm. come out so 2009 2011 2013 2013 2013 2013 2015, 2015, 2018, 2018, 2021. So a couple, one every couple of years because you're making bigger movies. And she's adopted several children during this time. She's got her own life. Like, I don't know. That doesn't seem like bad to me and it, and it seems like it goes like it, okay in like the 90s right it mm-hmm. says 90 92 93 93 so she has like a bunch coming out in 93 but she's younger you're probably yeah, she has fewer commitments i mean again 94 like, 95 96 96 96 so she, i think she's one to three a year during the 90s she's mm-hmm. thinking there of a it, lull in the early 2000s there, yeah that's okay that's uh, so so we've got here 2000 and then she's got one two three four that come out in 2000 uh, Gun Shy, 28 Days, uh, Lisa Picard is famous, uh, Miss Congeniality, and then 2002, she has Murder by Numbers, mm-hmm. Divine Secrets of the Yaya S- Sisterhood in 2002, 2002, she has Two Weeks Notice. So you can literally see her career. It's very consistent mm-hmm. the whole time. Uh, when you're making good money, you don't, there's a, I would say if there was a lull here, it would be, it seems like there was nothing between no, there was something in 2011. It doesn't seem like more than every couple, like two years maybe, she goes without working. But a lot of them do stage work. A lot of them do... Uh, right, or like I said, she adopted children. Like, she's mm-hmm. got other stuff going on. If she's financially secure, like, two years is not that bad. I mean, in a lot of European countries, they'll give a year maternity leave. Yep. Yeah. Um, I... I don't... I hate the idea that it just automatically blamed on uh, something as simple as sexism. Well, what's bothering me is like, what are you blaming on sex? What is your issue? Because yep. you've been consistently cast. You've been consistently mm-hmm. working. Are you saying that you aren't getting other roles be- that you wanted because you're a woman? Because mm-hmm. like there are a lot of actors who get no roles because... Is it, that, is, it that she, is it that she wants a different type of role? Yeah. Maybe, like, Maybe then you should move to producing or writing. Like, like if the you 350. Know, she was a producer for a hot minute. So she is working in all aspects yep. of the mm-hmm. industry but but it's fashionable now but mm-hmm. it's fashionable See, now i felt like this is like you made the comparison to taylor swift earlier miracle yeah. i felt like this is when when <clears throat> taylor swift made all those political statements yeah you know you can do whatever you want to do girl but like it just felt like it was like she waited saw that people were, were having this me too culture and whatever else and then she was like me as well i am also yeah well that's what kim and i don't want to try to do you remember but then she I got don't canceled wanna under sight like it I know there are I can't imagine the pressures of being mm-hmm. a young woman developing in Hollywood or in the music industry like there I I don't want to act like I know what I know what they went through at the mm-hmm. same time though this feels like Sandra Bullock is making a statement you're right to stay relevant or to be like well, let's remember what the biggest evil is: sexism. Yep. It was hard for me because I walked around with blinders on through my li- through life and got to where I felt I was less than because I because I was a woman. She explained. Mm-hmm. What like this is the thing? Like I feel like it's you're just actually, virtue signaling. It's just no, what virtue I actually feel signaling. like is someone is telling her this. Like, by the way, did you know that you, you are having? Well, a that's hard what time? happened with Taylor Swift for her Netflix documentary about herself. Like, basically, she didn't realize until somebody like said, yeah. "Oh, I but watched." If you, uh, if you didn't realize there was a problem, was there actually a problem? Like that's exa- what, exactly that's what's bothering me so much. Sarah Bullock didn't get passed up for a different role. She's wait. When did she start her career? Like what age? Because Taylor Swift started at age sixteen. So she has like to me. I'm like, dude, you're 16. A lot of people are like, I want that because she's young and fertile. Yeah, I'm, and I mm-hmm. think growing up as like uh, an underage person who comes into fame, like there are a lot of pressures that come with this. I can't exactly. Imagine. But with Sandra Bullock, it sounds like you've worked consistently, and you're upset that 
you're working? Like, this this I, is a, I, I want to bring up this quote that I found the other day mm -hmm. uh, that, that I, uh, Hollywood needs to realize they're the problem. And this quote is from uh, Dexter. De it's, it's from the actress Julia, jo Julia Jones, who's mm -hmm. in the new Dexter. And she says, on growing up in Jamaica Plain, Boston, one of the greatest things about growing up there was that it was so ethnically diverse. You didn't pay attention to race. My dad is part Choctaw, uh, Chickasaw, and African American. I didn't realize the significance of not being white until I moved to LA. Mm -hmm. So she didn't realize that people thought it was a problem until she moved to the place that claims that it's the problem. Yeah. yeah because it's the place that struggles to talk about it mm -hmm. the most. And I think uh, I have friends who grew up in like Mississippi mm -hmm. and they uh, are very, you know, I, I'm sure they would consider themselves progressive and they mm -hmm. talk about, you know, we understand race in a way that people who are in wealthy enclaves of Hollywood mm -hmm. never will. Nope. And they will never understand. It's so nuanced and mm -hmm. it's difficult to describe. And I think Hollywood again it's not about actually making anyone's lives better it's really about how they can make money mm -hmm. bullock stars in the opposite channing tatum in the adventure rom-com the lost city on march 25th Ugh. she's that much older i'm how much older is she than channing tatum what more does she want to not know. for, for also, the like she so she's worth i just like i don't understand like you're mad because you're but you're work i but you're working consistently. You're working consistently. You're getting roles. People are excited about you. You have the luxury of being able She's to 41. take time off. Like, okay, so you get to be a cougar, I guess. Yep. In a, like, I just... That's a show. That was a show. Cougar Town. Also, yep. like, what bothers me sometimes... One of the things I did like about Taylor Swift, it's not that I agree with her positions once she came out, but she took mm -hmm. a couple specific positions that I was, you know, like, okay, fine. Like, you have really done your research. She did. Yeah. She backed um, a Tennessee lawmaker in a specific bill that regarded stalking mm -hmm. okay. and cyber stalking. I'm sure she's experienced that. We yeah. know that. There oh, are yeah. tons of reports about it. For sure. This kind of, I was suffering because of sexism. Like, okay, woman who has worked for decades in this industry, could you please cite for me a specific issue mm -hmm. that you are going to specifically make it your mission to address? This is just talk. If yeah. you see a problem, give me a specific campaign, mm -hmm. back it with your money, mm -hmm. and I'll believe you. But right now, it just seems like you had nothing to say in this interview that was new. I was yeah, less exactly. than because I was a woman, she explained. I don't know what that means. Well, and mm -hmm. also, is this like, you don't want to talk about your kids or your love life? So you're like, sexism. I know yeah. we well, can talk like about Well, like she this. was kind of, like the article that I brought up earlier, how Sandra Bullock like is so proud adopting her kids from Africa. Like she kind of said that she was scared of her old, like her son because he's a black male uh. in that article and i was like why are you scared of your own son did he try to like beat you little right like they're very detached from reality mm -hmm. i was like did your son who's like maybe a preteen now try to beat you or something like speak woman speak i don't i don't mean to it's be weird like weird guilt virtue mm -hmm. signaling so also like your life seems good mm -hmm. like what i would have been more interested to hear her say like if she does have a problem with sexism like this specific part of the industry maybe it's a casting mm -hmm. standard where else and i'm gonna work to fight it but i'm really grateful for the opportunities i've had mm -hmm. and the things i'm able to provide my children yeah, yeah like, i wish they spoke that say, way yeah mm -hmm. it, it's always there's a problem it's mm -hmm. always framed from the negative it's always, it's always framed problem, from something that needs but to be there's fixed. no action plan no nope. because they don't want to do it and like um another singer that kind of did the same thing billy eilish you know how like she wears like bulkier clothes mm -hmm. because she doesn't want people to know like how her body is naturally mm -hmm. but when she finally wears a tank top everybody like freaks out because like she's a little bit bigger than like usual women but what's then, usual women <laughs> she's bustier i mean yeah like, thank you i i didn't she's know. so young i don't really like to comment on it but like yeah but then like she did oh that type of bigger i yeah. I, I had no idea what you meant no, yeah because we're, we're looping you in here okay but um but then she did an interview where she's like, oh yeah, like uh, I suffered sexism. And I'm like, really? Your brother helped you. You got your career because your brother helped you. There is so much money to be made mm -hmm. in virtue signaling and there's so like, much money well, to be made. My thing is like, are you, we talked about language earlier with Uber, like mm -hmm. are you, why are we all saying sexism? Is this actually what you mean? Could you please specifically describe to me what you're talking about? Because mm -hmm. maybe it's not sexism. Maybe there is another problem. If there's another problem. Let's fix that. Well, but you remember how earlier I brought up Kim Kardashian, like how she tried to piggyback on the Me Too movement, but she got shut down mm -hmm. because they were like, no, you started your career showing off your body. Shouldn't that be sexism too? Because like they're basically being prejudiced towards kim kardashian yes she kind of got famous because of her sex tape but also like you don't know where what she experienced but then these girls like sandra bullock taylor swift and billy eilish they're like my whole career has been suffered because sexism yep 
it's so, a very well, easy. Well, and their careers have benefited because of sexism, right? Exactly. Like, so I don't get it. Like, I, I'm not trying to be like anti feminist, but like, some. I wish like they said it better, like how you said it, where like, um, I'm thankful how I got my career, but I do want to fight stuff within the career because there is certain things that you guys don't see, like sexism. Uh, but, or not even like, use sexism because right now it's a hot topic word and yeah. there's a lot of negative or like notions call out a it. specific mm-hmm. you know i want to make it an industry standard that young mm-hmm. women are not allowed to be privately interviewed by a casting director exactly like to protect them mm-hmm. yeah. or I, I don't even know what there are because i'm not in the industry but like mm-hmm. the I, behavior of certain producers uh right uh, the way mm-hmm. producers act towards you or like the to base pay based on like i don't know how many how many minutes on the film mm-hmm. you are so that there's yeah. no gender bias like but they but they love the fact that they get to be subjective with their casting so then they can also be subjective with their pay so if they can uh if they're allowed to discriminate uh on the basis of race gender uh because of casting because it's a vi- because it's such a subjective medium right they don't have to follow standard practices of making a casting call mm-hmm. open to everyone because mm-hmm. the role might not call for it mm-hmm. right so they can do that they can also do it on on the basis of pay so sandra bullock uh and tom cruise star in the same movie they're going to have different agents and mm-hmm. it's up to you and your agent to get you the amount of money you feel you deserve for that role. Mm-hmm. And then it's not your job to complain later. It's for you to negotiate as hard as you can, work the deal until it bursts, mm-hmm. take the best offer uh, that you work towards or walk away. Mm-hmm. It is not your job to say that it's because of sexism. It's your job then to... Maybe you should get a new agent. <laughs> exa- exactly. Exactly. But so. didn't Sandra Bullock get famous uh, during the time of Harvey Weinstein? I mean, uh, I just don't know enough about mm-hmm. her. Career. Everybody from that time period would be then. I mean, it's. I, I don't mm-hmm. know if she worked on any of his projects or anything like. That. I don't. Yeah, know, yeah. I don't know if he did Speed, but maybe he did the movie Speed. Mm-hmm. Um, but in general, I just thought I would. I would get your guys's perspective on that because, like, to me, when I look at it, I look at it as it's a visual medium. Uh, storytellers are going to tell certain stories that will require you to cast certain age ranges mm-hmm. of actors and actresses. That is not necessarily sexism. That's choice in story, and that's not the same thing. Um, I'm not saying, and obviously it does exist, like you said, but you need to cite specific examples and types of situations. Otherwise, it's just a blanket statement that's meant to make you look good and make Mm -hmm. everybody else, an entire industry of people, look bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My problem with this, I guess my takeaway, if you're asking from a perspective, Mm -hmm. is it seems like she has... um, she has been cast consistently across her age range. It's not like she was popular when she was a teenager and then when she became a gray-haired lady, she became like, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I do think that Hollywood has, there are certain actors who have to age into roles. You know, maybe they have a baby face. Maybe yeah. they don't yep. hit their stride. It doesn't seem like she struggled with that. Mm-hmm. I don't really know what she's referring to. And I don't love the use of, like you said, a buzzword mm-hmm. to when she is someone who is success who has reputation in the industry and if she really saw a problem she could do something about it um i'm not really sure what the point of these statements were yep. exactly but also i'm kind of mad because if you do like a quick search on her she was the world's highest paying actress be- both 2010 and 14 so i don't not know that where- long ago yeah so i don't know what she's complaining about and yep. again like i said there's no gap in her mm-hmm. career as yep. far as we can tell Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.